Welcome to Car Sales Talk 101, where it's all about life in the car business. Telling you like it is. Here's the man with the plan, Terry Cameron. Let's get started. Welcome back to Car Sales Talk 101. I'm Terry Cameron. Thanks for hanging out again with me this week. Uh, real quick, if you can, hop on over to Apple Podcast, uh, write a review, give me a rating. It's the motivation that I need to keep me putting out more and more episodes. And speaking of episodes, this is episode number 149. It's really hard to believe that over the past uh, oh, year and three quarters that uh, we've put out almost 150 episodes. Who would have thunk it? Sure not me. Um, besides, who would have thought there was so much information to talk about in the car business? I, can, I have to admit, I mean, it, it's getting tougher and tougher to think of a topic but all I have to do is look out over the showroom floor and listen to some of the comments that my listeners give me, and I seem to find something to talk about every week. Now, this week, we're going to talk about some common problems that you have if you sell a lot of cars. You have to think about this. Now, the more cars you sell, the more problems you're going to have, or at least the more problems you open yourself up to. We're setting records at our dealership, and I'm sure there's lots of you out there doing the same. Every month, we seem to be doing better and better. But every time we uh, um, increase our sales, increase the number of people that we talk to, that we deliver cars to, the more chances we have of things coming up. Usually, we find out about these in our survey if it's a new car, and that's really too late to find out, but that's... Um, just one of the issues. We have more surveys and we have an opportunity for either a lot of good ones or a few more bad ones. And a lot of times that's because because we are so busy, we tend to shortcut the, the delivery or or maybe we don't get that manager TO that's going to give them that, that uh, fuzzy feeling, make them feel good when they leave the dealership. Maybe it, you're just not following up before they get the survey. Maybe your manager hasn't followed up after they purchase and before they get the survey. But I want to talk about one thing particular, in particular, that that seems to be creeping up on us, and I'm sure it's happened to every one of you. If you've been in the car business for any amount of time, it's it's happened to you, and it might have even happened to you in your personal life. What I'm talking about is buyer's remorse. So recently, we had a customer come back in. Actually, I don't want to make it sound like it's it's a epidemic. We've had several customers wanting to back out of a car deal the day after and sometimes up to a week after they purchase the vehicle. I guess there's different laws in different states, so you have to be careful with how you handle a customer that wants to back out. Let's talk about some things that are going to really hamper or hinder your uh, resolve to keep them in the car. Number one, if it's a specialty bank and it's not funded yet, and they haven't brought in all the stipula- stipulations that you need to get that deal funded, you might want to let them out of the car deal. That's It doesn't make any sense to keep them in a car if the bank is not going to fund, fund it. I'm not saying you have to do it. I'm saying you might have to do it. Or you can help convince them a little bit more how important it is for them to, to keep that car and help them get those stipulations. Now, that's probably the only time that I would think that I would consider letting somebody out of a, a car deal. I mean, now that they've contracted, it's done. And in the way we do business today, you know, if once the contract's signed, we e-contract them, it's a done deal. And as soon as that customer drives off the lot, they are the proud new owners of that vehicle. The dealership has nothing to do with it. It's between them and the bank. So uh, we have these customers that also tend to not bring in all their down payment. The down payment that the bank required because that's what they said they were going to put down. And, And maybe their check bounces. Do we have to let them out of the car then? Absolutely not. Again, different states, different laws. Get your attorneys involved with that. Uh, I believe uh, bouncing a check up to a certain amount could even be considered a, a felony. So you got be careful with that. Now, if 
this buyer's remorse a lot of times has nothing to do with the car. It has to do with that feeling they have if they, they, they got a good deal. And it happens all the time when your customers leave the dealership. They're going to run into somebody that is a car buying expert. And they're going to tell them that they paid too much for the car. Or they're going to tell them that they didn't get enough money for the trade. Or they're going to tell them that the interest rate is too high. Or they're going to try to send them to another dealership where they have a friend that's going to bird dog them. So you got to know the reason why the customer wants to back out. And if that's the reasons right there, nope, you, you don't have to let them out of the deal. But you ought to sit down with them and make them feel a little bit better about the deal. We had a customer come back the other day and she wanted out of the deal. And this was a few days, I think it was three or four days after she purchased the vehicle. Uh, because she said she couldn't fit, reach the gas pedal and brake pedal well enough. A little bit of background on this deal. This was probably her third or fourth time in. Uh, she tried so many different cars and she, she settled on one particular car and brought somebody in to help her out. He agreed that we were giving her a good deal and he kind of pushed her in the direction of getting this new car. You see, the one she was trading in had 140, 150,000 miles and it was 10, 12 years old and it was time to trade. So she was really happy when she left. As a matter of fact, she hugged the salesperson before she left. She came back later and really was uh, upset because she said she couldn't comfortably reach the brake and gas pedal. Well, it's kind of easy to fix that with a little pillow on the back. You know, there's even some contraptions that you can get at Walmart to extend the gas pedal and the brake pedal so you can reach them a little bit better you know after we talked to her about all of this stuff we found out that that really wasn't the problem it was just buyer's remorse she kind of missed her old car that she had for so long and and she wasn't quite comfortable in the new one yet so after talking to her a little bit longer showing her different options she decided to keep the car and she was happy a little bit later down the road guess what though she came in and traded it in Two weeks after she purchased it, maybe three weeks, she traded it in for something that was a little bit smaller and she felt a little bit more comfortable in. We almost let her out of the deal, but I'm glad we didn't. And you don't have to either. So buyer's remorse, all that is, guys, is a customer feeling a little bit bad about buying a car. And it really comes down to that monthly payment, especially if they didn't have a monthly payment before. They, they traded in a clear title and now they got this monthly payment. They were really excited when they saw the uh, the, the car. She, they demoed it and they fell in love with it. And the next day or day after, or a couple days after, reality set in. And now the buyer's remorse. Here in Texas, th we do not have a 72-hour rule. I don't, I'm not sure about in different states, but we have customers that believe they have 72 hours to back out of a deal. And I think the last time I read this law, that only pertained to people that were solicit it at their house and there were contracted or signed papers at their house not the ones that actually did the solicitation not the ones that came to the dealership to buy the car there is no 72 hour rule here you buy it you own it so again don't let people come back with a little bit of buyer's remorse and expect to get out of the car deal what you need to do is expect to sit down with them and go over that vehicle one more time maybe in a little bit more depth make them feel much better about their decision to purchase the vehicle. Maybe they forgot a few things about the vehicle and some of the features that were really important to them. Go over it again, make them feel very, very comfortable with their, their decision. And at the very least, a manager needs to come out and back you up if they're not already out there talking to them. The manager is going to make the decision, not you. So has it happened to you before? Buyer's remorse? It sure has happened to me. I mean, I went out and bought something that was expensive and really felt bad about it the next day. But you know what? I bought it. Nobody sold it to me. And I still own it. And I'm sure it's happened to you. Don't worry about buyer's remorse. Don't worry about all the other issues that are going to come up because you're selling a lot more cars. Just make sure you don't shortcut the process and you make sure that you the, the customer feels really comfortable about their decision to purchase. If you didn't strong arm him into it, you shouldn't feel strong armed to let them out. 
Okay, so I jumped around a lot about on, on this, but hopefully I'm, I got my point across. I want everybody to remember the sky's the limit, and I'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. Please rate it and write a review on Apple Podcasts. We appreciate your valuable feedback. You can email Terry at 10 Talk at hot.org.